Okay, we are live. Guys, let's give it a couple of minutes for people to start jumping on, and we will do it as always. Uh, this is stream number three, number four, and we're getting the hang of it. I am streaming at a lower bit rate, so we should have a better connection than last time. Um, 360p we're framing it. Last time it was like at 480 or something like that, <clears throat> but um, hopefully we don't get too many uh, intermittent video jumps like last time. All right, so let's give it a couple minutes <clears throat> for guys to start jumping on. <clears throat> <coughs> yep, give me some feedback uh, as far as audio, video, let me know, um, and, and the for you guys to get the most out of all of this is you're going to have to text in and I'm going to have to see what's going on because, you, you know, text in, write in what's going on, how the audio is, the video, and uh, let me know how things are going. All right. Also, please. Um, yes, Japan. I am in Japan. Uh, the last live stream. I will show you outside. How many of you guys want to see outside? <clears throat> Well, the Echo, I am not sure because I have I have the audio off on my side, so it should be good. Is anybody else having an audio issue? Please let me know. Awesome, good to see you. Does anybody else have an audio echo issue? No. Okay. So, A-Rod, I think it's probably your computer. Maybe you might want to just jump in and out quick, restart or something, and, and log back on. Just try that. Um, and tonight's topic is figuring out what to pay for a used car when flipping cars for profit. Now, this is a common, common question. Uh, we're going to get back into this question in just a bit. Um... For all you guys jumping on live, if you could please just type in um, where you're from. I know I, I, I recognize a lot of names here. A-Rod, Mr. Mitchell, a uh, couple of names here. Ignacio, Ignacio, right? A couple of names here. Um, we're going to have more people jumping on. I, I just sent an email broadcast. It takes time usually for people to get on these things because uh, people are in the middle of doing things. They're eating dinner, whatever the case. It's just, uh, you know, I think the more we do them, the more we will get a set time going. But I'm all the way from in Japan right now, L.A. So here is my place. Uh, you know, I got I got kids. I got a family. So the place is really messy right now. But this is the studio room that I am staying in. A uh, little messy. We just got here last night unpacked to this location in Niigata, Japan. Okay, we just got here and this is the first, I just had my first night here last night. It's actually Thursday morning at 10 o'clock a.m. for me right now. Um, you guys, you in the Philippines, it's we're probably near the same time zone. You're, you're an hour or two in back of me. Um, all the other guys in the U.S., you guys are 14 hours in back of me. So that's the time difference. You could see outside here, uh, you can see the building right across the street. You could see that RNG building. That's the building I'm staying in, right? You could see me right here. Huge building across the street. How many of you guys want to look down the street? Just say yes or no. If it's yes, I'll open up the window and I'll show you down the street, show you what it looks like. If not, I won't worry about it. But this is the studio I'm staying in right now. I'll show you around quick. So we got a little little kitchenette, right? Nothing fancy. <coughs> Don't mind me. I have a cold. Uh, we've been traveling so much. So get little bathroom. You know, look how see how small. Uh, little desk. I have my office on the other floor. I will show you my office next week. 
Um, I have another full office. Hopefully the stream, it looks like we got cut out a little bit in the bathroom. <clears throat> but the stream is back. Yeah, it looks like the stream cut out in the bathroom. But we are back live now. And I will make sure to stay in the office area from now on. But um, if we want to look outside, let me just make sure we get back up and running for, before I go crazy. Dominican Republic. Stream is continuing. <clears throat> See, we always get these issues with streaming. Hopefully it comes back. I'll just wait just a little bit until it, until it picks back up. Uh, my internet is good. There we go. We're back from here. <clears throat> the stream cut out. So now I know not to go into the bathroom. <clears throat> just wanted to show you around quickly. But uh, quickly, this is what outside looks like. <clears throat> You can see, kind of a gloomy day, but that looks pretty cool. There's this actually a college right next door to me. Right, that whole building there, this is all a college. It's a school, like a fashion institute school thing right across the room, right across the street. Pretty cool, right? All right, let's get started, and we'll go for about 30 minutes or so, and uh, we will close the show out. <clears throat> How's everything going? You guys hear me okay? The stream's coming in okay right now? Just wanted to give you a quick little tour of the apartment. If you guys want to type in the chat, great. Okay. So, I don't know if I could share screen, which is what I really want to do. Give me one second. Okay, it looks like I can do This is a demonstration of Wirecast. Okay, it looks like it's doing something really weird. Do you guys see my screen right now or no? Do you guys see my screen? This is a demonstration. Type it in. The quicker you guys get me feedback, the quicker I can get back to you. No. Okay. I see. Some people are saying, yeah. Okay. You guys do see my screen. No. I want to know if you see my screen, my computer screen, not me. Okay. 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 Yeah, everybody sees me, but I, what I'm trying to do is show show you my computer screen so we can go on Kelly Blue Book together. Um, it looks like I have to upgrade this program, Wirecast, that I'm using.
So forget it. I'm not doing that right now while we're live. This is a demonstration okay. of Wirecast. So here's what we're going to do. You guys see me. That's the main thing. Okay. So we just got a question in. All right. And a lot of people get confused when it comes to buying and selling cars for profit. They're like, Tony, what should I pay for a car? All right. He's like, I found a, a car is on Craigslist. Uh, Honda Accord. He didn't, he didn't tell me what year it was. This is a demonstration of wire. Cast. Honda Accord LX. Okay, 2003. He's seen them for 2,900, 3,600, 4,500, 29, 39, 44, 31, 26, 3,000. Lee. Now, my question is this: What kind of offer will I make to these sellers? How do you figure out what the right price is? The Kelly Blue Book trade-in value for the above car in year is twenty-one hundred. Please, I need your help to point me in the right direction as regards what to offer this for the cars I found on Craigslist. Thanks. Okay, so when you're looking at cars, okay, a Blue Book value, okay, Blue Book is Blue Book just gives you an overall price range okay it is not set in stone the reason why i like to train you guys this is a demonstration of why to look at the blue book is because that's where your buyers are looking okay so you need to know what your buyers are looking at and comparing you with okay now, Blue Book doesn't consider vehicle-specific demand in any geolocation. Do you know what I'm saying? Blue Book doesn't know that in Hawaii, Toyota trucks are very, very popular. They don't take that into consideration. They don't take the demand into consideration. Do you guys get what I'm saying? So... A 2000 Toyota Tacoma may be priced at $4,000 in the blue book. But if you look on Craigslist, right, or in the, the papers, you won't find them for less than 65. And you're like, what's, you know, it's not even close to the blue book. I mean, what's going on? Well, it's because of demand, right? People, the market decides what a vehicle is worth. Is the market decides a what a house is worth. Just because a house is listed at five hundred and fifty thousand dollars, right, doesn't mean it's worth five hundred and fifty. It's worth whatever the market decides to pay, and this is the most important thing, right? So if the house is listed for five fifty, houses and cars, same thing. All right, we're just I don't know why I'm just talking about houses, but just because it's listed at five hundred fifty thousand doesn't mean it's going to sell for that. Just because your Toyota Tacoma is listed at ten thousand doesn't mean it's going to sell for that. Of right? The market will determine the value of that vehicle. All right. So I say Blue Book is good to know the numbers, to do your initial research, to see where everything stands. Um, it's also where most of the people look, and most of the people get their values. So <clears throat> a lot of times you'll scoop up deals from people that don't know anything about cars off craigslist because they're looking at blue book right this they're 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 seeing that the tacoma, their toyota tacoma is only worth four grand on blue book they don't know about cars they don't go on craigslist they don't buy and sell right it's just an, an average 55 year old man who's who's a uh, computer technician who knows nothing about cars, he's listing his truck for sale because he wants to make a thousand more than what dealer's going to give him for trade-in, right? So he's like, screw it. Dealer's only going to give me 3,500, which they know they can sell for 6,500 or 7,000. If I sell it myself, the blue book's saying 4,500. If I get 4,000, I make an extra thousand, this right? That's how the average, this is how the majority of people think. You guys getting this so far? Right? So those are the deals that you're actually going to be scooping off of Craigslist or people that you know, people that want to get rid of cars. And once you start putting the word out, this is how you're going to start getting more deals. Okay, so now when my fellow VIP guy here was saying, 
hey, I'm finding a 2003 Accord at 2,900 to uh, what's this what's the range here? To 4,500. That's that's the range from 29 to 45. Right, Blue Book's at uh, 2,100. Now, as we all know, as we all know, um, hold on one second. Honda Accords Asian cars sell for. They hold their value a lot longer than American, right? People love Hondas. They are known for dependability, this is uh, reliability, of um, affordable parts, easy to work on, right? Toyotas, Hondas, Mitsubishis, all these Asian cars, they're very, very easy to, to work on and fix, and they're very dependable. So people like that. So just from the market, right? They are always going to be higher than Blue Book in most areas. In most areas. All right, so when you see Blue Book at 22, but people are asking 29 to 45. This is a demonstration of You know, there, there are many reasons that determine a final value on a product. Okay? Condition is, is one. Um, and mileage is another one. Okay, so you can have the same 2003 Honda Accord in bad condition. Needs body work and paint, needs an interior cleaning, needs a tune-up. That's why it's probably going for 22. Then you have your other same model and year, right? Lower mileage. This is a demonstration. Maybe it doesn't need too much test. body work. Maybe it has a scratch here or there, right? Not a big deal. Um, and it's just in better condition. That's why they're asking 45, because it has 30,000 miles less or 50,000 miles less. Okay? So each car has its own value. You can't just look on look online or searching for deals and say, Tony, I, I found these seven cars that go from this price range to this price range. How do I know what to pay? This you actually got to go and look at the car. Call the person up. Find out what condition it's in. How many miles are on it? Is it beat up or not? right? The condition will determine the value, condition and mileage. So take that into consideration. Um, and you also, what I, what I always say, even in my main books and courses, okay, you want to use the, the meth, the advertisement itself, the, the, this what do you call it? A demonstration of why I I'm, I'm just got a brain fart. I've been traveling, so I've been traveling a lot. I'm sick. There's a lot, of, <laughs> a lot of things going on. Please excuse me. You want to use the market advertise Craigslist, basically. Okay, you want to use the distributing channel to research the market where you're in. So if you're in Dallas, look on Dallas Craigslist. Okay, spend a week on it. Just looking at vehicle prices. If you have a $5,000 budget range that you're starting to buy and sell cars with, okay, if you have that budget, start looking at cars at $6,500 and lower and just keep seeing and, and teach yourself what prices are, what the car prices are going for, right? You may see cars from this much to this much. And you're going to start to learn. The more you look at deals and analyze data, the more you're going to learn. This is a demonstration. You might of start Wirecast. looking at, you know, all 2,000 Honda Accords are priced at about 2,500 to 3,000 dollars, right? Maybe less or lower. All in your your area, right? Because you're you're going to be doing this in your local area, right? This stupid symbol is is annoying, right? And then. After a week or so, you're going to get an idea. Oh, this is what a 2000 and 2002 Honda Accord goes for, right? After that, when you see one listed unusually below the this value, right, whatever you're seeing, Wirecast. like 1400 you're like, what the heck? What's up with this? You click on it immediately, and you'll see that, wow, either this guy is stupid, he made a mistake, he doesn't know what he has, okay? And that's the time you go for the kill. You go for the jugular, Right? You call them up, you'd be the first to schedule an appointment, first to look at it, first to bring the cash and snatch the deal. That's how you make money in the game of flipping cars to profit. All day long. 
All right, you do this, you get on every day, a couple times a day, and I tell you what the best times are um, in VIP. So if you're a VIP member, you get the unfair advantage. But this is what you want to do. You're on it constantly, you're learning, you're writing down on your notepad, okay, this much, this much, this much. And I have all these little cheat sheet things that you can use to make your life a little easier when doing this. But that's how you do it. And then you learn. And then you go look at the cars. Actually, spend a half hour, right? Spend a half a day. Go look at two, three cars, four cars. This is and a see what, what, what you're getting for your money. Because you could always negotiate the deal. All right? So my buddy's question here, how do I know what to pay? What to pay is based on condition, right? Mileage of the car, overall inspection, checking it all out and then determining and negotiating a killer deal okay because you know this 2003 honda this is in this condition is selling for above 4500 okay and if you can get it for below that 3200 3300 you know you'll make an instant thousand at 1200 bucks uh, probably even more if you wait it out a little longer. Okay, there's a line when it comes to pricing and buying and selling cars. You could do what my father always did. He always sat on about five to ten cars. Okay, and he this always asked top dollar because he wasn't in a rush to sell. And he would sell less, but he would get a higher price. Okay. It depends on your business model. You can sell less, okay? You can sell less. That's why, Kevin, this is why I'm starting to do these. I'm doing these for VIP, okay? I'm mailing this out to VIP guys, but right now I'm allowing other people to jump on. Uh, but yes, I will have more updated info, especially finding deals in the VIP area. I've just been super busy traveling the world, uh, but we've been getting awesome reviews with VIP. So you have two different, my, my model was blow it out, make a good amount of money, but get to the next deal. All right, volume, that was my model. And I, I would literally sell three, four cars before my dad sold one. I probably, not probably, I, I, yeah, I probably made more money than him, but he had to do less work. I had to do more work because I had to, I was constantly finding deals, right? So it's, it's all relative, right? The more you put in, the more you're going to get out. Uh, you know, he was in his early, late sixties, early seventies when he was sitting around with cars like that, but he constantly had, you know, a flow of cars coming in through auctions and through people that he knew. I mean, years in the industry, right? And um, and that's how you do it. This so you guys, did you guys get anything of out of this test. so far about pricing a car, how to find a deal and all of that? I will be adding new videos where we will be taking VIP people in and I will go to your local Craigslist and help you find the deal in your area, help you do the market research in your area for VIPs and also with VIPs you guys get three video critiques like this that I do for you so you could have a car listed up for sale because the ad is the number this one thing when listing a car for sale there's a, there's a correct formula to structure an ad that hooks people in and gets people to call you okay and this is a, a big part of selling your car quickly getting a lot of calls and this is what I do for VIP guys is I'll, I'll do personal critiques for you on video. You send me your link, what you did. I'll do a video interview. You know, I'll check it all out and um, I will show you exactly what's going on. Awesome, Kelvin. So it would be very uh, advantageous for you to jump this on here demonstration um, of as we do cast. these once a week um, to help you get more ideas and to, to take everything to the next level. <clears throat> Awesome. So how do you like the uh, Learn Auto Body course? We added two new series in there. Um, and I'm going to be working on the v the BMW series once I get back to Texas in a couple of weeks. Uh, we got a lot of things going on. And I'm also going to be creating a section on um, 
a more of an in-depth section this on how to basically start cast. off with your own auto body and paint business. So if you guys are interested in that, out of your own garage. Okay. So that's pretty cool. Are you guys liking this so far? If you give me some feedback quickly. Um, yes, I'm liking it or what's going on. You know, Give me some quick feedback if you guys are liking this. Now we're going to open it up to regular Q&A and we'll go uh, regular Q&A for about 10, 15 minutes. And um, I will see you guys on next week. This is a demonstration of wire. Awesome. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And, um, you know, as we go on, you know, I don't know if you guys know, but I do have another website that I run um, that teaches about YouTube and video marketing and, and how to basically build your own online business uh, like how I do here with you guys. So that's a pretty cool um, subject as well. Um, yeah, the Wirecast thing, don't worry about that for now because I touch something and I don't know how to get rid of it. So don't worry about it. It's not like we're doing any kind of technical thing where you need a lot of video from me right now, right? Um, great, 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 great. How many of you guys on here for the first time? If it's your first time, just click first just so I have an idea. Kansas City, please put your question in again. Just copy and paste it and put it put it down below because I didn't answer it because I probably I was going on my tangent here and getting this getting this out. How do I get your my ad reviewed? Send me an email. You could send it at um you could do ninja support at how to buy and sell your cars dot com. Ninja support at how to buy and sell your cars dot com and my girls will get it to me. Okay, because we literally get hundreds of emails every single day, and I I can't go over everything. I have my girls review, and they give me the ones that I have to personally reply to. Okay, so Kansas, send me your. You could just go to how to buy and sell your cars dot com forward slash blog, and then down below. Down below, you will have a contact tab. Okay, or just go to learnautobodyandpaint.com, click on contact and open a support ticket. Just go to my contact and any of my sites, open a support ticket and just say add critique this and is put an your ad listing cast. in there and give me all the info. The more info you give me, the more I can give you. All right, some people are very vague and it's like I have to reply back wasting my time saying, hey, you know, get back to me. Um, so we will do that Kansas City. Yeah, I will be going live every Wednesday, 9 to 10 p.m. Eastern in that area for about a half hour. This is a demonstration of okay. the cast. Mm. Can you touch base on importing cars from Canada to the USA because of the weak dollar? Well, basically, you could just buy cars in Canada and import them. You could drive them right through the border if you want to. You can have them delivered through U-Ship. I mean, there's no big deal. I just bought a car, a mini truck here in Osaka, Japan off eBay. Guys, another good place to fish is eBay, especially for collectible cars, unusual cars. You get good deals off eBay. I got my 97 uh, M edition original owner for $4,000 off eBay. Classic. Um, I also got a 90, what the hell year is it? 90, 89 or 90, I totally this forgot. This is a demonstration. Uh, of Hijet, Japanese mini truck off eBay in Japan, and they're shipping it over. I'll, I'll have it the first week of August. So I'll be doing a live video of that as well. Um, brands or cars to avoid? I say the question you should be asking is, what cars do you want to stick with? And I say Asian. So 
Asians are very, very good. Unless you, you, you like a specific brand, make and model, or just a car so much, you know so much about it, it helps you. It's to your advantage. Like for me, I love BMW. So I bought and sold a lot of BMWs early on. Now I do everything. But I had extra BMW parts. I knew how the engine worked. Um, I knew how the suspension worked. So if you... Um, you know, the process of importing is pretty simple. Is a demonstration Basically, you get a bill of landing from the shipper. It's mostly the shipper that does the work. Okay, the person you're buying it from. So it's not a big deal. Okay, you just get it. They prepare all the documents. All right, they'll tell you how much taxes you got to pay, how much the importing fees are. And once you get those numbers, you say, hey, yeah or no. It's super easy. Right, I'm having mine shipped over on a, a, a freight uh, vessel. And that's not the first time. This I sold the classic to a guy in Russia cast. off eBay. All right, I had a 60 Bel Air. I sold the guy bought it on eBay from Russia. He didn't even look at the car. I mean, that's ridiculous. I forgot how much I, I got for it. I think I I paid eight. I got like 12 or 13 for it without doing anything to the car. Bought it locally for eight, sold it for 12 or 13, something like that. I totally forgot how much I sold that one for, but I made a good three, four, five grand, three, three to four grand on it, I think. This is a is eBay of Wirecast. Is eBay sold listings a good reference? Yes, it is. eBay sold listings are a good reference um, for eBay. It, I wouldn't base all of your research off eBay because eBay is international. Okay, so demand for something may be way off the charts, right? Like I said, eBay, I think, is good for collectibles um, and unusual cars. Like cars that is a demonstration just are unusual. Wirecast. Like the one, the one I got or certain unusual classics you can get for a pretty good deal. How much can I ask for a 2001 Chevy Tahoe clean? Go to your blue book, Raul. See what they're going for, okay? Um, how many miles does it have? Take that into consideration. Go on Craigslist, type in that, see what they're going for, and adjust accordingly, okay? This is a demonstration. You gotta do the little market post. research. It depends on how clean. I haven't seen any pictures. I haven't seen anything, so I can't really tell you right, right off the bat. Uh, what's the ad and YouTube site link that you do? What's the ad and YouTube site link that you do? I don't understand that question. What was your pickup truck again? Uh, the pickup, I'm going to keep that a secret. I don't want to give it away. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'm having it delivered. It's, it's being delivered to Galveston, Texas on August 5th or 6th, something like that. So I'm going to actually go and pick it up and bring it back to North DFW to my location. And I'm going to record the process. I'm going to have my nephew go with me. And we're going to video the whole thing, make a little mini documentary. Um, and it's going to be cool. And that thing I know I can sell for profit, but it's such a cute little truck. It's a mini truck that I think I'm just going to redo. Like it's in excellent condition. It only has 10,000 kilometers. It's a 1989. 10,000 kilometers, which is like 6,000 miles, and I got it for a deal. What I pay? I paid like 2,000 or 2,500 for it, and freight is about 1,500. So you could do the math. Jake, I'm having a hard time selling a 2014 Maserati. Where should I focus on selling it? Well, I think uh, Craigslist is, is a good way. You could do a, a, a physical ad. But I think the reason why you're having a problem selling it is because of your ad. Okay. Like I said, there's a there's a way to structure your ad to make people say, wow, this seems like a pretty good deal. Let me check on it. And remember, Jake, when you're selling a high-end car like that, what are you asking? What are you asking for the car? 75 grand? The when you get into that higher price range, right? It's going to take longer to sell your car. 
hands down because of a high high price this range. A it's going to take a little longer, cast. but once you get into the supercar, Lamborghini, uh, Ferrari, right? It, you probably sell them a little quicker, but you have to have it priced right because you're selling to the guys who got money now. They really got money to spend, right? If they want to drop 200 can on Lambo, they got it, right? Most chances are they're not worried about financing. Although a lot of people do finance. <laughs> From your experience, is it hard to sell? No, absolutely not. You know, you'll have people this looking for convertibles. So get a cast. popular, buy and sell popular convertibles. Don't get something like a Chrysler Sebring. <sighs> I mean, I wouldn't want a Chrysler Sebring. But again, it's not what, what you want. It's what other people want. So Ford Mustang convertible. That would be a little more, you'll get more ground, you know, you'll, you'll get more people interested in that than a Sebring, I think. Mazda Miatas, hell yeah, people love those. <laughs> Um, automatic and manual is another one. You know, a lot of people are like, should this I buy and sell only automatic or manual? Or Me, if I had a sports car, always manual. People like, if somebody's buying a sports car, a convertible, right? 80% will want a five speed, five, six speed, whatever, four, five, six speed, whatever, right? Automatic sports car, not really, but if you're getting into the sedan, uh, luxury vehicle people like automatic so that's what I do okay um, so I know some of you guys on here cast. first time how do you lowball without losing your dignity well you lowball tastefully okay you don't want to just be a total jerk there's a way to lowball and I cover that in the VIP course as well. You know, we cover everything from A to Z. We have some VIP members on here now. <clears throat> um, guys, for you first timers here, click on this link to get a free manual on flipping cars for profit. Kind of go over a little bit more things and how you can gain some goodies cast. and nuggets on there. So don't forget to check out that URL. Uh, what do you do if you get a lemon? If I get a lemon, uh, I try to get rid of it ASAP. Right, I try to fix it sometimes, uh, but the whole thing is to avoid getting a lemon. And that's why in the F1 course, I have the inspection series is how I show you how to inspect a car and give you the basic tools that you need to weed out lemons from this a good car. Is a demonstration of why okay, and we get in depth. I give you all the videos. We go over inspecting cars together and you know, it helps, it helps a lot. So the whole, the whole idea is to avoid getting a lemon, but sometimes you'll end up with a lemon, especially when you're first starting out. So with me, if I, when I used to get lemons, I, I very, I hardly get lemons now. I can't remember the last time I got a lemon, but try to fix the issue ASAP and get rid of it, right? Sometimes you may break even, you know, you may buy a lemon and say, oh shit, it needs a transmission or you know, it needs a head job, you know, suck it up, pay the four or 500 bucks from a mechanic or 600, whatever it is, get it fixed. And you may break even on it and just get your money back to move on to the next deal. You may lose a hundred or two, but don't that, don't let that discourage you. Victor, I bet you it'll be the best investment that you made in yourself. Because if you could take just one little strategy, one little idea that'll help you sell your car quicker, find a better deal a it's a skill that you'll have for life so it's really a no-brainer investment to me education especially aligned to what you're doing right if it's going to get you one step closer to the next level it's always worth it <clears throat> of course that's how you have to be that's the success mindset guys guys I'm, i am in the middle of publishing my first real book okay um, we're going to have it, we're guaranteed to get it on Amazon as a number one this bestseller. Um, I want to do a New York Times bestseller, but I don't know if my first book is actually going to do that. No, I still, I'm new to the game of, of that stuff, but it's costing me $10,000 to get started and get my first book published. All right. I'm going back and forth with editors. Uh, we have a small team. I'm doing weekly interviews with a professional interviewer. And I'm just, just letting you know, this is how much I invest in myself, okay? 
Um, I don't know if you guys know, but I am speaking at Harvard in the next three weeks on a particular topic. Pretty cool, right? Um, I was inv- I was at a seminar about a month ago, and I was invited literally two weeks ago, and it just blew me away. I'm actually going to be speaking at Harvard uh, at the business faculty. Pretty crazy. So wish me luck on that. <laughs> uh, okay. Thank you, Raul. Hope, I'm glad you guys are liking this. This is a demonstration of Wirecast. 97 me out of 70,000. Is that a deal? That's a deal. Get it. And three. if they're asking 3,000, that means you can get it for cheaper. I would. It, it depends on what condition it is, though. 70,000 miles, hands down, is low mileage. That's low mileage for a 95 Miata. I would be all over that. Okay, three grand, you probably get it. I would offer 2350, 20, 24, because they're going to come back a couple hundred higher. You snatch it for 25, 2600. 33, you could probably get that thing down to 28 cash. You go there with cash. You go there with cash in your hand and you put on a good little show. Okay, and everything's a show, by the way. Everything's a show. How you present yourself, how you walk around the car, how you, it's it's pretty crazy. And we go over all this stuff in the VIP course. But yeah, if you could snatch this that cheap uh, and you do a good ad, you could definitely make money on it. All right, you guys enjoy the show so far? You guys get some golden nuggets out of this? Awesome. I don't think it's hard to find people who want Miatas. It's just not advertised correctly. A 95, is is that an M edition? If it's an M edition, even better. A demonstration of Wirecast. <laughs> All right, I'm going to head out, guys. It's 42 minutes so far. We did the the main topic, um, which was talking about what to pay for a used car when buying and selling cars. Okay, so if you're watching the replay, go back to the very beginning. Uh, And then we did some Q&A here for everybody. And uh, I appreciated everyone watching. Um, I will see you guys on next week, same time area, okay? And, uh, And be sure to check out the free this book a here of and I will also be available by email there so if you reply back to your emails about anything I will personally get back to you and talk to you about VIPs or whatever you're interested in help you get to the next level with flipping cars for profit um, share this with your friends your family uh, whoever's interested hit a like down below if you're on YouTube watching this of course you're on YouTube hit a like um, comment, whatever, and I will see you next week. I will be in Japan for the next three weeks. This then I head down to Boston, Massachusetts, and Harvard. Um, maybe I will do, uh, maybe I'll, I'll just do some regular video there, and then I'll upload it so you guys can see what Harvard looks like. I've never been to Harvard. I am a high school dropout, a college dropout, yet I got invited to speak at Harvard. So I'm kind of blown away. I'm a little nervous. Got about 120 people in the audience. <laughs> But uh, we'll see how that goes. So I actually got to go buy a nice suit here uh, within the next couple of days and uh, get ready for my event in Boston. After that, I go back to Texas to pick up my car from Japan here, do a couple of things, then I got to fly back here to pick up my family. So I got a pretty busy next couple of months, but I will be on here um, communicating with you guys. I hope all is well. Check out the VIP course if you guys have not invested. Um... I'm telling you, for the price point, it'll be the best investment that you make to take yourself to the next level. All right. Have a good day. Tony from Japan in my messy house. (laughs) Thanks for getting on. Cheers. I'll see you on next week. This is a demonstration of Wirecast. Bye.